Senate Republicans are holding their first policy lunch since Minority Leader Mitch McConnell's second time freezing in public in front of reporters. While McConnell's health is a concern to many, senators are negotiating a bipartisan spending bill in order to avoid a government shutdown, which would hit October 1st. For more, let's bring in CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarlane. You see him there on Capitol Hill. Um, Scott, it's interesting because Senator McConnell made very little reference to his health on the Senate floor yesterday. You've had the Capitol physician saying he didn't have a stroke or a seizure when we all watched him freeze twice now on camera. How big of a focus do we expect his health to be in the closed-door meeting? It won't just be an agenda item, Errol. It'll be the primary agenda item because Republicans have been asked about this at home. Republicans have been asked about this by journalists. Republicans have been cornered on the health of their leader, so they're going to want to hear from their leader, Mitch McConnell, what his prognosis is and what his plans are. I spoke to a number of senators today from both parties. It is quite clear as this Wednesday began here on Capitol Hill that Mitch McConnell has the support of his conference to stay as leader despite those two incidents in which he appeared to freeze up in front of cameras. The letter released by the office of the attending physician, Congress's own doctor, seems to have quieted the concerns for now. And the doctor says that based on his review of imaging and of Senator McConnell, that there is no seizure disorder, there's no stroke, there's no sign of Parkinson's disease, that the senator himself has been ruled, deemed fit to return to his busy schedule and return to work. That seems to have quieted the concerns for now, but in Congress, Errol and Michael, everything is temporary. Well, Scott, let's talk about item two on the agenda, which is what's the status of government spending negotiations right now in the Senate? There is a growing sense that a standoff is imminent, that there's going to be brinksmanship here. They're going to go right up against that September 30th deadline in which the federal government will turn off the lights, close the doors, and shut down. Is there an exit strategy? That depends on whom you're asking. Um, Republicans have been pretty clear in the U.S. House. They want to trim spending significantly. They want to shut down by tens of billions of dollars the top line of how much Washington spends. Democrats have been unequivocal in their criticism of what the Republicans in the House are doing, cutting spending for things like climate change initiatives, diversity programs in the federal government, things that they know are non-starters. So both sides are digging in right now, clearly messaging to their bases, clearly pushing for their own priorities. There's no indication with 24 days till the deadline, Errol and Michael, either side is trying to merge somewhere or look for common ground. This is going to go right up against a deadline. And it's not just that a government shutdown is possible. It's increasingly likely. Yeah, and we see this so often, you know, the U.S.'s credit rating keeps getting downgraded, so not a good look for the country. Scott, I also want to ask you about um, Congressman George Santos, because a federal judge in New York has agreed to push his next court hearing for his fraud case to October 27th. We understand that they want to have more time to speak behind the scenes and maybe come up with a, a plea deal. Uh, what can you tell us about what this means? That's right, Errol. There was supposed to be a court hearing tomorrow on Long Island in George Santos's federal criminal fraud case. And as a reminder, Santos, this first-term Republican congressman, faces nearly a dozen federal fraud and federal criminal charges, accused of mismanaging money, of misappropriating money, of fleecing taxpayers, of making false statements on campaign filings. Santos is going to now push that hearing with the, with the prosecutor's support until late October. Some of the language in the court motion to do so indicated they're talking. Prosecutors and the defense are talking and want more time to have conversations. That often indicates there is some type of plea discussion underway. George Santos, in the meantime, returns here Tuesday. He is still a sitting voting member of the U.S. House despite the federal criminal charges. And speaking to the previous issue, Errol and Michael, he's a pretty pivotal vote for House Republicans as they face this prospect of a high-stakes standoff over government spending. All right. Interesting stuff all around. Scott McFarlane, thanks very much.